Hey, this is Red Band coming to you live from the world famous Comedy Store main room for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Get up for Tony Hatchcraft. Yippee doo da day yet again. Good evening and welcome, everybody. Ah, what's going on, buddy? Brian Redban and yeah. I are here for another fun episode of Kill Tony. Feels Excellent. just right in this room. Yeah, it feels great. Here in beautiful West Hollywood, California, which is shut down. Yeah. Happened about, last about, week. About we were, to be yeah, shut down. Right when it happened. And now it's shut down. Mm-hmm. But now we're about to be shut down. Yeah. It's incredible. But we're going to have fun. Uh, it's been a good week since the last episode. Boy, it just feels like yesterday. It feels like the same exact day, but without a sweatshirt. I'm excited to be here. We're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, the great Ryan J. Ebelt is here. Wow. Look at him, everybody. Ryan, oh, give these people a wave. Every single episode is drawn out by Ryan J. Ebelt, and those prints are all for sale at ryanjebelt.com. Some uh, limited edition Kill Tony stuff, some drawings, all the tour posters, and uh, a bunch of other cool stuff. RyanJEbelt.com for all of his amazing artwork. He has already started drawing tonight's episode. How about a big hand for Vito's Pizza on delicious, <laughs> delicious foods and pizza. La Cienega Boulevard between Santa Monica and Melrose. I love it. I go there once, twice, three times a week. A lot of fun, a lot of good times. Shout out to Charlie, our guy, keeping us all thick and uh, happy. And a big hand for the great Gino, everyone. He's here every single week since the inception of this show, right up there with Laney and Jerry. If we had a Hall of Fame for people that are uh, that are diehard fans of the show, they would be right there, right at the tippy top. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of episodes. So let's get into tonight's. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited about it. But before we do, here's a little bit more from the incredible sponsors that made this all possible for you. Hey, y'all. The holidays are just around the corner. Are you looking for a way to stay connected with loved ones during the holidays? Well, I'm telling you, this skylight frame that I got the other day is unbelievable. Easy to upload. Tons of pictures uh, of the family. I feel like they're there. And... I don't have to argue with them. It's absolutely incredible. After I got my skylight frame, it was easy to send new photos to it all the time. It's absolutely incredible. You know about this. Yeah, skylight frame is a photo frame you can update instantly by email from anywhere. You just send a photo by email, they get it on their picture frame. It's a great way to feel close to those you love, even when you're separated. It sets up effortlessly in under 60 seconds. Just plug it in, use the touch screen to connect to your wireless network, and enjoy. Sending photos to skylight is effortless. Everyone in the family could just email them to your personal skylight email address, and they'll pop up in seconds. Multiple people can send photos to the frame, so it's a great way to keep large networks of friends and families in touch. It has a black frame and a white mat, so it looks like a real photo frame that adds a beautiful touch to your home. For a really special gift for the special people in your life, you've got to check out the Skylight Frame. And I'm telling you, we have them. They're super cool. We have fun with it. Sometimes I'll send him pictures of uh, me in the bathtub with a rubber ducky (laughs) right to his frame. Now as a special offer, you can get $10 off your purchase of a Skylight Frame when you go to skylightframe.com, enter the code TONY. That's right. To get 10% off your purchase of a Skylight Frame, just go to skylightframe.com and enter the code TONY. That's S-K-Y-L-I-G-H-T-F-R-A-M-E.com, promo code TONY. (laughs) What? Baby, he is the best in the world. Oh no. <laughs> what has happened? Don't look for that at any other stand up show. You're like, when, are, when is a family reunion happening at this stand up show? This is not normal. This is a not normal show. And we're back. Super excited. Are you guys excited? This is one of those uh, really cool moments on the show where I bring out a guest who is very special to the show. This young man made his debut years ago as one of the first ever panel guests of the show, or one of our first ever road shows in La Jolla. This guy was on panel, and then we saw him uh, again and again and again, and then he uh, joined Pat Reagan, the former band leader of Kill Tony, 
as a bandmate for a few episodes, and then he was part of the band, and then Pat left, and he was the band leader, leading Joel Jimenez and Chroma Chris to great, great levels, and then Jetski Johnson. He is the leader of the Kill Tony band. Tonight's guest has a brand new special coming out this week, December 8th, available on Amazon and all platforms at jeremiahwalkins.com. Guess who it is? It's the leader of the best damn band in the land, Jeremiah Watkins, everybody. Wow. Need you from the bomb and we locked eyes. My surprise. There he is, Jeremiah Watkins. He brought some albums with him, perhaps to uh, to give away to people. No, these uh, there's a there's a couple special people on the inside that the the special thanks are made out to. And uh, the first comedians are Tony Hinchcliffe and Brian Redman. Wow. wow! Look at that. That's so cool, man. Are you excited about That's this? Incredible. I'm really excited. These copies are for you guys. I did bring you uh, guys. Wow, so it turns out some lucky people will be getting free copies of yes. Jeremiah's special. No, I'm Shut kidding. that shit out, I'm guys. kidding. I'm going to keep this. I'm going to put it on my shelf. It's going to look like you're just sitting there. I know. Look Jeremiah well, Watkins, guy. family reunion, December 8th. How exciting. The debut special from the little baby gorilla himself, Jeremiah Watkins, a guy who, wow, what a history we have. We've been all around the world together. Dude, the Monster Energy Drink Tour in uh, 2017, that was one of the things. 27 cities in a month. Yeah, it was insane. And it was, uh, we did two-man shows where I do half an hour and then Tony would do an hour, and that's where, you know, I developed a lot of chops that, like, you know. Goddamn right. Make you closer to becoming a headliner and stuff like that and get you more comfortable on stage. So, yeah, I'm, I'm and super you grateful to you guys. you got introduced to a lot of the club bookers, a lot of club the bookers. owners, yeah. the Sony general for managers. The first time. Sony, I go, this is yeah. my friend Jeremiah. They know me as a worker bee. I put in a good word, and look at you now. You're all grown up. You're ready to fly away, and that's why he's here to announce he's... No longer going to be part of the band, everybody. Yeah, it's very exciting. He's he is uh, <laughs> moving on. He's moved on with his own special. He figures, why be part of an ensemble? <laughs> By the wow. way, I, I don't think we've talked about this. A couple the weeks. Self-promotion never <laughs> ends. The world's smallest. <laughs> this isn't even an actual size of a C DVD. This is a... And a couple of weeks the ago, city. by the way, Bravo, I don't think we've even talked about this. You were out of town doing shows in New York, I believe, and you had the band, or the band was all dressed up as different Watkins brothers and sisters. Incredible. And the, the, the idea of you throwing in uh, advertising for your special through them was Bravo. That was, that was one of Joel, the funniest. That was Joel's idea. <laughs> that was actually Joel's idea. I can I, tell. It was brilliant. I, I can I, tell. It I actually had nothing to do with it, and he told me that we were going to do I was like... Dude, if you do that, just make sure Tony knows that that was not me behind that. Yeah, well, they didn't make sure. I assumed it was you the whole time. I've been fuming about it. Perfect, no, I'm, perfect. I'm kidding. Well, Jeremiah, it's funny. I can't believe I get to tell you this, but I don't know if you know this or not, but there is a band on this show. There is a band. Yes, there is. Every single week, they commit to being different characters and stay in character. I never know what they're going to be. Do you know what they're going to be? This is an interesting one. I feel like you probably do this time because you're a little... We'll see. Little we'll showbiz. Uh, you like to peel the curtain back. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll find out together. Let's find out what they are together. It's the best damn band in the land, the Kill Tony band. Jet Ski, Jesse Johnson, and Joelberg, Joel Jimenez. Six J's, two humans. Oh, shit, we've seen this before. Wow. This is very exciting. I believe it's Bill Billingsley, ladies and gentlemen, the legendary... Heavy drinker, just always is having a meltdown. These are old-timey characters. And Jetski Johnson, remind me of your name. Hey, I'm Starla, unfortunately, Billingsley. <laughs> oh, Starla Billingsley. And you're the ex-wife of Bill? No, unfortunately, we're still married. <laughs> Whoa. Isn't she just a peach? Bill, <laughs> what's going on? Bill Billingsley, one of the most famous characters in Kill Tony history. Actually, Tony, I've been clean and sober for about a year now. Li life is going great. Wow. I just have some water tonight. Everything's going well. Seems like your marriage is going good. Yeah, I mean, I love her to death. I mean, she's really just such a wonderful woman. I'm just happy. You know, she had my back throughout the everything, you know. What, what do you mean? Are you gaining sobriety? She had your back? 
Yeah, I mean, I'm in the program. You know, I'm in the program. I don't know what this guy's laughing about. Uh, <laughs> Redman instantly is commenting on Starla's boobs. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Redman. Red okay, They're so good. pointy. Thank God. <laughs> Red band, you're you know a monster. what 50s boobs look like, Red Band. <laughs> I was like, I never saw that before. It's 50s boobs. I've never seen a set of boobs that didn't look like that. I don't know what you're Red laughing Red Band's at. never yeah, wished yeah. that he lived in the 50s more than right yeah. now. He's like, oh, I'm going to go back. I'm going to build a time machine just so that I can see point of boobs. I've, I've never seen boob character work before. This, <laughs> this is incredible. Awesome. It's great. It's like 8-bit. I'm going to build an e-time machine. Starla, if you're not happy with Bill, why do you stay with him? Because it's the 50s. <laughs> Well, honestly, Tony, I'm not drinking, but I am still beating this shit out of my wife. It Whoa. takes the edge off. Wow, this is a couple from the 50s. Starla Billingsley, Bill Billingsley, Jeremiah Watkins, the real man, Jeremiah, not in character, the real human being in the flesh. Jeremiah is going to be with us all night. Red Band and his soundboard. You guys ready to start the show? Should we do this, huh? What is it? I'm excited. Whatever. This should be very, very much fun. There's only one way to get this party started. It's with a god damn perfect little fucking man biscuit. <laughs> this guy right here writes a brand new minute every single week. He was panicking earlier. He said he might not be ready for this one. So let's see what happens. He lowered the expectations. I'm excited to see what's going to happen. One of my favorite top young rising comedians in the world. It's the one, the only, the big red machine, crazy. William Montgomery. Here he is. I'm crazy. Happy Thanksgiving, Indiana! Uh, Anne Frank wrote in her diary that she and her best friend Morta would be best friends forever. I'll have to take her word for it. Uh, Anne Frank wrote some pretty funny jokes in her diary, mostly racist, but you know how the Jews are. Uh, Kamala Harris says her favorite word is progression, and her favorite sentence is life without parole for possession of marijuana. Uh, you know that stuff that they throw into the fire at the beginning of every episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark? Uh, yeah, I can get you an ounce for 120. Uh, at this point, is there really any celebrity that didn't die of COVID in 2020? Other than George Floyd? Jesus, wow. Real, uh, real closer there, William Montgomery. Had nothing but, had nothing but fire missiles throughout that set. I have nothing but respect for George Floyd. Yeah. Is that, is that a George Floyd hat you're wearing? Is that, you could be speaking in Spanish right now. I don't understand you. It's got an F on it. Is that in honor of Floyd? George Floyd. Floyd. George Floyd. That's what the F stands for? I love him. Why? What do you love about him? That he didn't tap out when the cop's <laughs> knee was on the back of his fucking neck. Oh I respect God. that about him. Oh I respect God. that about him. I don't think tapping out was an option. He had his hands cuffed behind his back. Well, that's uh, that's that's hearsay. No, uh, that's what happened. It's on video. I don't know if that's what happened. It's like on Predator One, when the guy was shaving in the jungle and accidentally broke his razor while shaving, and blood came out. A lot of people compare the George Floyd murder to that. I've heard that. Yeah. Who are yeah. these people we're talking about? And what is Predator One? It's a movie, huh? What's a movie? Are you Hispanic? They had movies. No, I'm 100% white. They had movies in <laughs> the 50s, motion Bill. motion pictures in the 50s. What's a movie? <laughs> That's when it started. I've been yeah, drunk. what's a movie? Get well, him out of here. Well, I've been drunk for the last 30 years. Yeah, I believe it. Aren't you on a 12-step program? I am now, and that's why I'm asking, what are these these things? I didn't. What know. are these things? I'm in a 12-step program. I've noticed. Quit like, I don't fucking like this doing this to this renegade. show. I don't like you. Bill, Somebody's been drinking. Bill, relax. Bill, relax. I'm calling down Bill. I, gotta call I, I my like sponsor. it when William gets fired up. Bill, just take a breath. Yeah, I'm fired up! I'm going to call my sponsor. I'll see you guys. Will versus Bill. Predator 2! Hey, your Did you eye, see that movie? Your eyes are better now. Last week, you had some problems with your eyes. What happened? Yeah, you look much better. It is something called... Uh, what are those things you put in your eyes that help you with red eyes? Eye drops. Yeah, I, I did eye drops. Oh, wow. 
Really helped. Also helped with my diet. Yeah, you drank that some of them? No, I'm eating salads now. Wow, what kind of salads? Uh, pesto the, salad. <laughs> pesto <laughs> salad? Okay. Keep your mouth shut. That's not funny. <laughs> what do you mean pesto? pesto sh- what do you mean pesto salad? Potato salad probably is what he Potato meant. salad? <laughs> I'm eating potato salad. William, I've never heard you use that voice before. I do a potato salad. Is that your potato salad? Voice? I eat potato salad. Is that your impression of potato salad? I'm eating a potato salad. What else does that guy eat? I'm eating corn. Corn and potato salad? What's your main dish? I mean tortillas. Just tortillas? What are you putting in? Just there? tortillas. What are you putting in? With corn. And what? Potato salad. And what else? Potato salad. <laughs> what do you mean, what else? What are you drinking with it? Prune juice. Whoa, big twist there at the if end. If anyone uh, watching this, especially people in Malaysia, if y'all have tummy issues, uh, drink prune juice. Ah, what does it do to you? Look right at that camera and tell them what pr- the benefits of prune juice are. You're the new spokesman for prune juice. Go right down the barrel, slow zoom, Zach, and here we go. How's it going? My name is Philip Martinez. I am currently in Malaysia with all of y'all. Uh, start drinking prune juice. It really helps with your tummy. I learned it from my father, Larry. Uh, it help, helps you do do. There you go. Perfect. That is some just high quality. That's for the smart fans right there. Tony, can I just say it's a little so something? I've never seen, I never ever get to see this angle of the soundboard. Mm-hmm. And Red Band has a program open <laughs> called Tap and Fart. I've literally been looking at that app for seven and a half years. <laughs> And my favorite, always my, been, my, everything else has changed and evolved over the years, but there's always been one entire program called Tap and Fart. I and, just, and he always gives me the way of like, just give it a second. Right. I always have to like hold him back uh-huh. because he literally, once he opens the app. Hey, Red Band, is that what makes it funny? Okay. You're allowed one an episode, Red Band. Hey, William, if you ever want to quit drinking, I'll give you my phone number. I'm in the program now and I've done it for about a year. And cool. I think What's maybe your phone th- number? Quit fucking talking to well, me. You guys seem to have a real bad chemistry. You well, can he just say reminds that. me of who I used to be, Tony. Wow. I used to be this guy. Yeah. Really? And now I look at you and I just feel I feel sad, I feel pity. Yeah. And then Shut we, the fuck your up. Your face is fucking swollen. Don't ever talk it to me. It is like almost that. Thanksgiving. It's already Yeah, be been thankful I don't kick that fucking ass. <laughs> oh. Don't kick that fuck shut up. Yeah, what, be what, thankful what are for you that? doing? What are you doing for Thanksgiving, William? Last I week. Am making yeah, what did you do it, for Thanksgiving? What did you do? So for Thanksgiving, I made a really good turkey. I was really proud of it. I made uh, stuffings. Uh, I made chicken and stuffings. How did you make it? What was their prep for the stuffings? It is cans of biscuits uh, that you put in the crock pot along with cans of chicken. It's called chicken and stuffings. Uh, It's a real big hit. Uh, yeah. During Thanksgiving, uh, word to the wise, if you have an elder person you're cooking for that recently had a seizure, Uh-oh. don't make chicken and stuffings. It's filled with salt. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're going to have... You're going to have... That's you're going to have... There you go. That- the ambulance there on Thanksgiving and not have a fun time. Perfect. Why didn't y'all help me on that? I thought y'all were going to help me on that. It felt like you were doing a Jeopardy question where you said, like, we're going, what is, and then you kept talking and you're waiting for Alex Trebek to end. And I just want to give a shout out to the African-American man up there who did the light down a little bit. It was good. It actually looked great on camera. Yeah, thank you so much. What are you looking at up there, you piece of shit? No, don't no. insult the lighting guy. Well, I like that because we don't, the African Americans, I, I feel the same way, but maybe we are closer than I thought. Well, you're married to one. Well, Starla is actually white right here. This is my wife right here. 
Hey, well, so you did all that cooking for Thanksgiving yourself? I did a bunch of cooking. Huh. Whole bunch of cooking. How long did you cook the <laughs> stuffing for? He did the cooking. Uh, yeah, I did the cooking. Looks like he did most yeah. of the eating, too. What does that mean? I've lost 30 pounds in the past two two weeks. Really? How'd you do it? Uh, fin Fin. What's that? It is a now defunct uh, <laughs> uh, diet pill, but oh. I was able to find some. I fin that. Fin. Fin Fin. My, oh, that's it, my Asian friend's name. My, my dad and my mom, I guess in the 90s, uh, tried to sell diet cookies, and they invested like, <laughs> like a lot of money into it. Diet and my grandma had to like bail them out because they, oh, had, shit. they had so many diet cookies that they oh were trying to God. sell. Do they like still have some of those? Cookies. Can I get some? No, no, they're wow. gone now. A fun ate, fact about uh, <laughs> Jeremiah's uh, mother and father is they were both there during the taping of his special family reunion. Yeah. What did they think, Jeremiah? What did they think about your German jokes? My German joke? I didn't have any particular German jokes that night, but I had jokes about them, and they were on each side of the stage, which made it pretty awkward. Have you talked to your parents lately, William? I uh, love your parents, by the way, William. My dad. I talked to Me Larry too. the other day. He said he texted Texted you. He texted me? No, he texted Jeremiah. Oh. Yeah. We Instagram DM sometimes. Wow. wow. Look at that. Your dad's in my DMs, bro. Yeah. He wished me a happy birthday. Does he uh, ever send you some, like, you know, photos? He sends me nudies of William sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Just my little penis with the pink tip on my penis. He photoshops William's baby penis onto his adult <laughs> body. <laughs> I, I was hoping funny. he photoshopped it onto Herbie the love bug, the then, car that talks. And then he puts his adult head on his baby body, and it's like really weird pictures that he sends. It's just the black dude they use for all those COVID memes. Shut up. I just learned what you memes are. You messed up you know what? enough episodes recently. I'm fucking tired of you, William. You need to get. We need to talk about this. You need to get into the program. You fucked William up. William Montgomery I, and William Billingsley having a William off right now. Mm -hmm. a, lot of, uh, a lot of anger. I, yeah, I changed just my so life. Ex Shut up. At least Starla doesn't stab me with keys. I try. Don't All right, William. Any anything else that we bitch. missed since uh, last episode? What else? Anything else? I was in uh, Tampa Bay, Florida this past week. Had yeah. a hell of a time. There you go. Shout out to Tampa Bay, Florida, the new home of Tom Brady. Wiener Schnitzel. There you go. There, well, you, there like he goes, that. everybody. The great William Montgomery, everyone. On to the next one we go. There goes William. The show has begun. David Deary is here, as always, helping us out. Fresh off of a big trip to Yellow Springs with Dave Chappelle and Donnell Rawlings and the whole crew. David Deary out there in the big leagues using his Kill Tony producer credit to bolster an entire other career absolutely incredible i love it all right ladies and gentlemen i pulled the name out of the bucket let's see what happens here your first comedian we're about to meet right now together goes by the name of harry garcia here we go or henry henry garcia henry trucking henry, henry garcia. garcia everybody here he is that's right Growing up in the hood was not easy. I would get punked every day on my way to school. And this is before I even left the house. Yeah. Now, I, I even had the opportunity to join a team at the local park in the neighborhood. But I was too scared to become a gang member. So I, I didn't make the tryouts, guys, okay? It's, it's a little intimidating when the coach's name is Trigger, you know? Like, Trigger had a tattoo of a skull on his face. And the skull had a tattoo of a tear underneath its eye. <laughs> the tattoo had a tattoo, okay? It's, uh, gentrification has really done some things to the city, though. Like, uh, Trigger is uh, now eating Beyond Meat tacos. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right, guys, I'm Henry Garcia. Follow me at Henry Garcia Comedy. There you go. A little plug at the end of his set. He's <laughs> plugging it. Henry, welcome to the show. This is the first time you've been here, correct? Yes. I think I would remember a Cholo Kermit the Frog. Yeah. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't recognize him without the cranberry juice. 
<laughs> hey, there he is. Yeah. That's you, right? You're the guy on the skateboard? Dog face. <laughs> that, that, that would be cool. If dude, I didn't cool. know the seven dwarves were banging now, dude. <laughs> Where you from, homie? <laughs> Snow White, homie. What's he up, dog? Kind of looks like chubby Joel Jimenez. Full yeah, Jimenez. he does. <laughs> looks like Joel like undergoing chemo or something like that. You have uh, a little bit of a... Uh, what part of Alhambra are you from? Uh, I'm from Echo Park. Echo Park. Hey. Before, before all you hipsters took over it. <laughs> Dude, I can't even drive through there anymore. I get sad. Anyway, and this was in the 1950s. What am I talking about? So glad to there be were, sober. There was also cars in the 1950s, Joel. <laughs> you could drive through things. <laughs> yeah, but... Yeah, we okay. still don't have one. And why is that, Because Starla? you don't have a job anymore. Ooh. I was in the fucking program. Uh, so, Henry, welcome to the show. How long have you been doing stand-up comedy? You are an adorable little fucking are. thing, aren't you? Yeah. You Thank get told you. that a lot? You get told you have a little fucking you know ben, Benjamin, <laughs> Benjamin Button? Ticklish. No, no, Benjamin. no. I, I uh, have not been <laughs> Benjamin told that Benjamin Button. So thank you. <laughs> I, I age in reverse. That. I've been doing comedy since January. January? Of this year. Yeah. Oh, How's been that been going for then. you? It's been interesting. I've been doing comedy throughout the pandemic. What's funny is your hat doesn't go over your ears, but you seem to have such a tiny head. How do you get a hat that small? <laughs> it's one of the tiniest little hats I've ever seen. It's Look actually it. a baby thimble. I got it at Baby Gap. <laughs> <laughs> Did. Fuck yeah. yeah How old are you? I'm 36. What do you do for work? I'm an executive chef. Wow, an executive chef. Del Taco? No. Oh, right. Uh, uh, no. uh, oh, I won't say, but it's. Do you it's ever tell girls you're an executive? What's up? Do you just say, like, yeah, I'm an executive, and you leave the rest off? Oh, yeah, no, my wife loves it when I tell her I'm an executive. So, you this, have is a a wife. Ni- this is a nice restaurant? That, that, or is this. It's, uh, it's not. It's, I work for a hospital. Okay. I'm an executive chef at a hospital. Oh, you're the executive chef at a hospital? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Have you ever gotten anybody sick off of your cooking? Was someone dying from something else? And no. Like, no? No. What do you make? <laughs> what do you specialize in? Uh, COVID-19. Well, I, I love fusing a lot of Spanish food with, um, like, California cuisine. Like, I'm really into farm to table, stuff like that. Thank you, Bill. Thank you so uh, much for that drum solo. My wife and Spanish. my daughter are vegetarian, so I do a lot of vegetarian cooking with, uh, you know. How long have you, know, you been married for? Uh, four years now. How many kids do you have? Just one. Just one. What, you- what race is your wife? She's Argentinian. Oh, so white. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Italian or German? I keep telling her that. Too. Italian or German? Ital- no, uh, German. There you go. Yeah. How do you only have just one kid? J- because she immediately tied her tubes after pregnancy, and I had a vasectomy uh, a, about a year and a half later. Fuck wow. yeah, dude. Wow. Yeah. You guys played it. <laughs> Wait, why do you need to do that? You did just double did that. down. So if some, so if we actually have a baby, it's like the 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 rise of the antichrist or something. Well, her having right. her tubes tied, you're not going to have a baby. You just you don't unnecessarily. Do, no, no, no. You the, cheat a lot. No, no, no. No, the, you can still possibly have a baby with a tube tied. How long does possibility- it take to get a vasectomy? I was in and out of there like in within two hours. Wow. You did it at I in and out. I didn't feel anything. It was fast. really yeah. It was, yeah, it was I know somebody that did it and filmed the whole thing, and he said he didn't even know it was finished, and it was like literally like three minutes or something. Did like that. Did your balls hurt fast. afterwards, Henry? No, it was. I mean, it, they felt a little kind of numb and heavy. Like I had like these big gorilla balls. Like they felt really heavy. When you say gorilla balls, have you ever seen the balls of a gorilla? Uh, I w- no, only in my imagination. They're like they seem really big, you know. What else have you seen of the gorilla in your imagination? Have you ever seen a wiener? Yeah, and it's really hairy. Really? What yeah. did you do with Dude, it? I just stared at it for a long time. <laughs> for how long? <laughs> how long, Henry? How long did you stare at this gorilla? I don't know. Time suspended. I can't. <laughs> I put it in a beanie and called it a date. <laughs> That is that is, a, uh, that is that's what that is right a real beanie that's a legit beanie. It's a, uh, what would we call that, Bill? Chiquitito. All right. You're in a Spanish. I learned it from a guy on the program. <laughs> Frijoles. How long? So you're you were born and raised in Echo Park. <laughs> yeah, I was born in Cedar Sinai, raised <laughs> in Echo Park, hi, and then Highland Park for a little bit, and then back to Echo Damn, Park. Damn, we're gonna talk after this anyway. The, back to Bill. Yeah, Billingsley. you guys. This could be like a hey. close relative to you, so, Joel. <laughs> Uh, Henry, anything else crazy about you? you? Have any special skills or talents? <sighs> what else should we know about your entire life? Anything? Any fun facts about Henry Garcia? Um, your mom's a goat or something like that? No, no. I did. Speaking of of uh, goats and um, 
Okay. Coyotes. I did. I one interesting thing is I did manage to be a coyote once, and I got uh, brought brought someone in from. Uh, I met someone at the El Paso border and wow. drove them to there for money. Wow! Yeah. Look at you, dude. You're so goofy. You're more like Wiley Coyote. <laughs> All right, Henry. Fun times, dude. Thanks for coming on. Have a Thank great Thank you day. guys for having me. Henry Garcia. All right. Okay. We're going to keep this moving fast. Thank you guys time. for having me. I'll be back. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Your next comedian, this is us meeting another human for the first time, goes by the name of Rishi Saraswat. Here we go. Here's Rishi Saraswat. Rishi Saraswat, everyone. Uh, I was doing a little bit of traveling before this whole pandemic. You know, I miss traveling because uh, I like going to airports. You know, you get to see people from all different walks of life, different ethnicities. The last time I was at the airport, I actually saw an all deaf family. And they were having like a really intense signing conversation. You know, it kind of looked like they were lost. So I decided, okay, let me try and go help them out. As I got closer, I realized they actually weren't deaf. They were just Italian. And I knew they were Italian for sure because the mom had a black eye. It's a dead giveaway. Um, I think it's fucked up how America blames Mexicans for stealing all the jobs because that shit is not true. Asians and Indians are the ones stealing all the jobs. And we're keeping our fucking mouths shut. I got at least two cousins working the call centers right now. Like, you ever get that call on Tuesday afternoon? Hello, my name is Cody. I'm calling from Data Link. It's like, bro, I know your name's not Cody. Shut the fuck up. And I know your name's not Cody because no one has ever pronounced my name correctly. Whoa, there's the bear. There's the bear. I haven't heard that guy in a while. Yeah, that guy, he comes out if you go over your time. Rishi Saraswat, welcome to the show. What ethnicity are you? Indian. Indian, just straight up Indian. Yep. What part of India does your family come from? They're from uh, North India. Okay. Yeah. Represent North India. Yep. Hell yeah, big Hell ups. yeah. And your parents, out to luck now. your parents live here in the United States of America, the greatest country on planet Earth? Indeed they do. Ah, that's awesome. What do they do? Uh, my dad works in IT. Wow. And my mom is no like, way. stay at home. Wow. Yeah. That, that, that's so Indian. You've heard is, of that so yeah, Raven? Uh, that's so is Indian. Northern, Northern is uh, Punjabi. Is that Punjabi? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Punjab. Yeah, there you go. Oh, wow. You ever do a... Uh, They're yeah. the Mexicans of India. That's how I know exactly, it. Exactly, yeah. You ever have a girl give you a Punjabi? Uh, mm. You know what yeah. that is? You know what that is. Yep. Yeah, you do. You like it when they do that, don't you? Hell yeah. It's your favorite thing? One of them. I don't like shit in my ass like that big. What's your other favorite? Uh, what's your favorite? <laughs> Tell your body. <laughs> <laughs> Red band. That's fun. Do your, you have a lot of brothers and sisters? Uh, one sister. Yeah, the Indian families keep it small. For, for an ethnicity that looks so much like Latinos, you would think they would have many babies as well, but no. Nope. You guys keep it small, focus. You don't just go fucking. It's not just fucking cream pie festival back here. What does your dad think of you doing stand-up comedy? Oh, he fucking hates me. Very yeah. disappointed yeah. in you. I am very, very disappointed. Isolate that <laughs> clip. Send it out into the internet. Yeah. I, what I happens. wish right. you better than this. Jesus. Spot on. Uh, <laughs> what, what does he say exactly? He put you um, through college? Uh, well, yeah. But, I mean, I went to community college, so, you know, it wasn't too that hard That is when the disappointment started. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I don't know. He thinks, like, I'm pretty much gay. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Did you come? I never yeah. see you with a wife, Rishi. <laughs> 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 Wait, why does he think you're gay? <laughs> I don't know. I told him, like, I'm out here in Hollywood chasing my dreams, and he's just like... Seems more like you're chasing manas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> What's gay about that? He's, he just doesn't understand. Chasing it. your dream is for faggots, Rishi. Yeah. Straight men do Technically, not do that's that. an Asian accent. Like you're you're out canceled, there in dude. Hollywood. I, I don't know what you're doing. You know, we'll wow. take you to back to India. We'll wash you in your Ganga. Wash your sins. You ever think about hiring an Indian prostitute just to take home and make them happy for like a day? 
be like, I'm marrying this woman, father. You're I've be actually so never seen an Indian prostitute, so I don't know. You haven't? No. Wow. I mean, I haven't been back to the motherland in a <laughs> They long put the time, dot so. on their chest. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a target. <laughs> Hiring a prostitute to make your dad happy is like the funniest thing ever. <laughs> Uh, does your parents like stand-up comedy at all? Like, are they into, like, Russell Peters or anything Of course. Like that? Huge Russell Peters fans. Wait, uh, India doesn't have a red I mean, dot district? I mean, they... Uh, no. I feel like now they're kind of coming around to it. Like, I've shown my parents stand-up and stuff. And, like, like my mom is kind of on board with it. She she likes Russell Peters. Um, but so my funny. dad is still kind of just, like, he doesn't understand it. He's like get a real job you know? do they do right. they so do they like when they see like aziz ansari and like different people who mm -hmm. are like in films and stuff like no. nah, they, indian no, people they don't get, care? indian people get proud when they're in, in a hospital and they see indian doctors they, uh, they were really stoked about kamala harris why nice isn't she Cause she's indian is she yeah she's that kind of indian she's not native she's actually indian no, I think she's just got some Indian in her. No, she's half Jamaican, half Indian. Uh, is that what oh, okay. she? Yeah. Is that what she bo, is? Bo. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> bo, bo, Biden. <laughs> bo, bo, Biden. All yeah. right. Well, I used to. I used to be in charge. Like, I worked at this company, and I was in charge of like seventy Indian guys, uh, fresh off the boat. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You were in charge <laughs> of seventy Indian guys. Yeah. Uh, that's a sitcom right there. No, yeah. they, they made a movie exactly about what I did. And er, it, it's like they would come into the country, and my job was to Americanize them. Like, no, this is how <laughs> you like do outsource. it. Outsource. This yeah, is for how the, you make the, a fart noise. For, yeah, yeah. For, for, for that, These for that are movie, Japanese outsource. tits. For right. that okay? Movie, for that movie, Outsource, 100% exactly the Terrible same thing. Terrible fucking movie. And, and, but it was weird because that's exactly what I did. I had to like help them with job interviews and shit like that. And one, a couple of them got mad. My sister also worked for me. And uh, she had a cow print on her uh, in her car, like uh, like a seat cover. And we had at this whole meeting because it, it really pissed off a lot of people. And it was like, we got to let you know that cows are a little different here. You're going to have to let that go. You know, like this is a good thing not to bring up at an interview and shit like that. Red Band's yeah. eating a hamburger. As he's telling <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, seriously. you can't call this a meat ting. Red I'm band sober. I'm not funny oh. anymore. Hey, All right, Bill Billingsley. <laughs> Thank you. Wait, are you starting to drink? Wait, what yeah. is that? It's is water, that the, dude. H2O. Sure up. I don't know. After seeing William, I'm thinking maybe just a little taste. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. just a little bit. Just a little taste. Let's yeah. Just, let's just relax a little bit. How about that? What oh, he's got, got, got a flask. Flash? Hey. Just All a little right, taste. I think you'll be all right. This is very exciting that this is a part of the breaking my sobriety for you. I love this guy. Might as well just cut his mic now, Red Band. I mean. They brewed this in Austin. It's great. Okay. There well, yeah, I mean, they take oh. the cow shit okay. pretty seriously because uh, there's, like, people who murder people in India for eating beef and shit. It's kind of yeah. crazy. It they is. murder people for... Yeah. for <laughs> yeah. I, know yeah. I know cows are sacred, but I didn't Super realize it was, like, murder. Yeah, I mean, it's, like, a small, like, sect of, like, people, but, yeah, they do that shit. What do they do? They murder what? They murder people for eating beef. Yeah. Wow. They got a beef Jeez. with it. <laughs> now, that's a diet I could get behind. Yeah. Red Band's always on an Indian diet because he goes to a new deli every week. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. That is uh, a joke. That's yeah. a joke, everybody. So, uh, Rishi, anything else crazy we need to know about you before we let you go? Crazy about your life? A fun fact about you? <laughs> if Tony lived in India, he'd live in Mumbai. <laughs> Okay. He would be um, too scared to live in India. He would be red chicken. All right. I don't know. There's a lot of crazy <laughs> shit, man. All right. There's a lot of crazy shit. That's one of my favorite Tony things. <laughs> all right. All right. Yeah, okay. 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 We're going to keep it moving along, everybody. They asked Tip Tony if he wanted to move to India, and he's like, nah. <laughs> all right. I, uh, I, I, see any I crazy teach fun yoga. Facts? You have two children. I teach yoga. You teach uh, yoga. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of crazy shit, man. Like what? Do you what? Want to know? Name one thing. Uh, I used to sell drugs. What kind of drugs? Okay. Um. Thank you so much. Started with weed, you know. And then went to. And then went to cocaine when nice. I got out here. Wow. And now yeah. what? What are you? What are you up to now? Uh, I you, work. What are you selling now? Still sell some things. Wow. <laughs> Look oh. at this. The market is hot, everybody. The block is hot. Everyone, <laughs> grab your photies when was the and last grab time? your showdies. When was See last me time after you the show. Something? I got you. Oh, you're okay. 
Yeah. Real is, recent. Is India a democracy? I mean, they say they are, but, you know, they're hella corrupt. That's kind of so, like, okay. Uh, right. They're not a real democracy. Rishi, I had so much fun talking with you. Come back, do it again soon, right? All right, cool. Rishi Sarah Thank Squad, you. everybody. Here we go. I'm going to keep flying through this tonight. Flying wait, through it, baby. can I say one thing real quick? Uh, wait, what? Follow, follow, wait, 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 wait. What, I, what, what did one, you ask? Can I say one thing real quick? Are you going to plug something? Can I do that? What? Please? Yeah, uh, follow me on IG at Reesh510, R-E-E-S-H-510. Jesus Thank Christ, you. my God. Get the fuck out of here with that handle. Yeah. What? what was that? Yeah, I don't even need. I don't even need to like delete that or beep that out because no one's gonna be like, "How do you spell that?" Right. <laughs> well, we. I don't know. Yo, beep it out. We, we we used to read the handles when we read the names. Yeah, but I mean, like, I know, but it's 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 better when I do it. But it's just a different time. It's a different time. It's not part of the thing now. Right. That's just how it goes. But yeah, follow him at Rishi five six seven W G W N B A. All right, another new person. Here we go. We're flying through it tonight. Your next comedian goes by the name of Adam Mockett. Here we go, Adam Mockett. Here he is, Adam Mockett. Hey, guys. I'm Adam. So you probably noticed when I walked up, I have a little bit of a gangster lean, throwing up some gang signs. A little background about that. When I was a baby, my mom took me to the doctors to get my vaccinations. And good news, they did work. I never got the measles. I never had whooping cough. I did get nerve damage to the whole right side of my body, but no diphtheria. I, uh, you know, they have this vaccine for the coronavirus, which freaks me out more than the actual virus. Honestly, guys, I'm kind of grateful for COVID because finally people don't want to shake hands. During the day, during the day, I work in the financial industry, and nothing says you can trust me with your money like a hand I have no control over. Because I have one hand, I can always tell my wife's really mad at me because she'll close things really tight. Toothpaste, pickle jars, her legs. (laughs) She'll be like, if you can open it, you can have it. Thanks, guys. Great stuff. 60 seconds strong from Adam Mockett. Coming Thank in guns you. a blazing. Thank you. For those of you just listening to the podcast, he has a, uh, what would we call that? What would we call that? The letter Z for an arm. Yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you've had that your whole life? Yeah. After yeah. a vaccination? Is yeah. that true? How old it's were true. you? A couple How, months old. A couple months old. Yeah. And, and, and your parents are like, give, him, give this kid a shot. I don't want anything to ever happen to him. Yeah. I asked my mom why she didn't sue because there was a big lawsuit about it. It was like back in the 80s. Yeah, well, that'll cost you an arm and a leg. If yeah. You <laughs> Thank you. That, that's super rare, right? Like that was a bad yeah. batch, I guess you would call it. Yeah, I, th- I think that's pretty much what it was. And uh, I know a lot of people. What wing at the that. hospital were you at? Well, definitely not the right wing. Yeah. Ah. Set him up, knock him down. And why didn't your mom sue? Why didn't she go to the long arm of justice or something like this? <laughs> she had five kids. I think she was just like... Five and a, four and a half, yeah. let's face it, right? <laughs> yeah. Come on. Four to five ain't bad, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. No, I love it. I love it. The other four kids, did they get vaccinated? So I'm the middle. So I have two older sisters. They did. The two boys after me did not. Are you anti-vac now because of that? Or are you in that, <laughs> that train? Here's the thing. Like, I'm not anti-vaccination i just think it's kind of crazy if there's a chance there could be a major side effect if it's mandatory it's kind of i don't know yeah yeah Yeah, but i think you know (laughs) out of all the bad things that have happened it's probably 99.999 percent good yeah 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 yeah. that's the thing it's like here's the i think about like if your kid gets like majorly messed up or something your next kid you're like no i don't want to do it right so yeah. yeah did they put the shot in that arm is that the arm that they did they actually put it in the leg but it's like wow. brain damage yeah, yeah. Uh, um honest fuck. question is it hard to put on that bracelet it's impossible to put it on oh my yeah. god how long has it been on for it's like a hand yeah 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 i've had yeah yeah, yeah right yeah, yeah. gotta get my one of my kids to do it or something yeah how many kids do you have i have four daughters damn Look at you. So yeah. that's that's another thing that happens. Yeah. So we the right testicle still works. We're still Look at that. Around. That's <laughs> what it is. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. My goodness. Yeah. And uh, what's your uh, what's your favorite uh, sexual position? You're good at, at making babies out there. What's what's your move? You like uh, froggy style? 
<laughs> you know, I'm Captain just, Hook. I'm just a missionary kind of guy, you know. You really? Know? Yeah, keep it simple. Uh, I loved your delivery, by the way. How you kind of leaned in. You're like, and my wife's lame. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate I, that. I should say this is the fifth time I've ever done stand-up comedy. Wow. wow. So that's great. Yeah. So wow. I'm excited about it and look at appreciate that. it. Being look at that. You write your jokes with your left hand. <laughs> Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I love it. Wait, yeah, that's a good quick can I can I ask that? Can I talk? Were you naturally left or right handed? Did you have to learn to write with your left so hand? So I was a couple months old, so you know. <laughs> not sure. But I'm the only one in the family that is left handed. So probably. Have and you, I have dyslexia and things like that, so I feel like my I'm Have you ever used your right hand uh like in a violent way towards anybody? Slash. Whoa! The claw. Oh, yeah. wow! Look at that. Oh my! It's like a little cobra at all times. You just have a little cobra <laughs> attached to you. Wow! Yeah. Yeah. So video games completely out. You can't. You no, know, back when I played video games, it was good because one hand, like little, right. like, oh. could play double a seven. I was super good. <laughs> but as soon as they started getting two hands, I was out. Yeah. Right. Uh, the financial industry. What do you do in it? Yeah, I built a pretty successful business. Uh, I have 175 licensed agents that work under me. What, what was so crazy is, so I started doing finance. And then, do you guys, I don't know if you know who Craig Conan is, but he, I grew up with yeah. Craig. So he's my, one of my best friends. And we go to a comedy class like the first day. And he's like, let's go. You're one of the funniest guys I know. Let's go. I'm like, all right, always, let's go. And I went. It was super fun. I signed up. And that day, I found out that my wife was having her first kid. And I was like, oh, crap, I have to, like, figure this out. Like, I got to work. So I, I didn't do it, and I started doing finance. And so now I have four daughters. And during COVID, I started getting really depressed and feeling like, man, like, what? I got to, like, I don't know. I just feel like I'm just going to do it now or never kind of thing. Wow, that's so Great. fucking cool. Yeah. I love it. So fifth time up, where where, where you all the other ones, <sighs> open mics and stuff? Yeah, two times at Vicky's. One was on Zoom, and, uh, like a Santa Monica school or something right here. Uh -huh. It's all been like in two weeks. That's fucking awesome, man. Dude. You could, yeah. you wouldn't be able to tell, man. That was great. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. You so, and I found out about this show, and like all I do is watch your show now. It's so funny. So you're from I the South it. Bay. Yeah. How did you know that? Because I know Craig is from South Bay. What uh, part of yeah, South yeah, Bay yeah. are you from? Yeah, Redondo Beach, Torrance. Oh yeah, shout yeah, out to yeah. the South Bay. Yeah. There you go. Shout outs to the South Bay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you surf or anything like that? Anything wild? You know, I got one hand, so more of a boogie boarder. Ah, you know, I got it. The whole getting up thing is. You're right. Yeah, balance. Kind of hard. <laughs> You'd be good at kites. You ever think about throwing that in like a? What do you do? Like a, you ever throw it in like a sling or anything like that? We've tried. I've tried surgery. Or they, when I was a kid, they did a surgery where they tried to switch this muscle with this muscle to kind of try to pull it up, and did nothing. Oh and, you God! Know, they tried. They, you went through a whole surgery and yeah. they weren't able to do it. Did, yeah. Have you thought about just putting a rod like straight through it, like some type of like doll or something, just being yeah, like, uh, hello? Honestly, <laughs> honestly, I just feel like maybe like eventually things are gonna get like scientifically <laughs> ready and the. <laughs> They'll fix it. I don't know. Honestly, like whatever. It's maybe who I am. You mm -hmm, know, a lot yeah. of perseverance, patience. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, have you ever thought of becoming a professional coat rack? <laughs> hey, that's a great idea. <laughs> that's a good hook. My Adam. lady. Hang in yes. there. Your hey. jacket, madam. <laughs> Adam, thank you so much you for so coming much. on this show. Thank Come you, back you, again soon. You. There goes Adam Mockett, everybody. <laughs> oh, I'm on my back. I fell. Help. The great Jeremiah Watkins Check is here. Out. Family reunion, December 8th. Available everywhere. JeremiahWatkins.com. All right. Another bucket pull. Here we go. Make some noise for Nick Reese. Here comes Nick Reese. Here he is. Nick Reese. So I, uh, I got a girlfriend with an OnlyFans account. And... Uh, I hear a lot of like controversial statements, like guys like, ah, oh, I could never do that. I would never let my girl do that, and you know, whatever. But for those of you that don't know, it, by the way, uh, OnlyFans is for the porn industry what private security is to cops. Um, I know that because both you know the the porn industry and the the cops were like, nah, nah. But both OnlyFans and private security were like, are you 18 and about it? Welcome aboard. Um, but, uh, I, uh, I recently, 
Uh, I actually didn't almost almost didn't make it today. Uh, have you guys ever got roadhead so good you got lost? <laughs> That's real shit. But I love OnlyFans because uh, you can go in there. I, I I found a loophole and basically for like you know their percentage cut of like four percent. I've been buying myself blowjobs recently. And that's pretty awesome because you can just go in there, make a separate account, and then I just subscribe to my girlfriend and then just act like an anonymous stranger. And for you know OnlyFans is four ninety nine. I can request a blowjob video, and I you you may recognize me from my role as the penis. There you go, Nick Reese. Wow. Two bear night. Look at that. Girlfriend I, on... I wanted that bear so bad. Girlfriend on OnlyFans, huh? Yeah, Is that true? It? What's her uh, address? It's Frankie Chaotic. Wow, look at that. There's a hard plug there. <laughs> I've Frankie. never seen Red Band move faster. <laughs> yeah. Frank, <laughs> I... broke I, a sweat. <laughs> Everything chaotic. slowed down. I've also never seen him happen. spell better. Frank, <laughs> chaotic. <laughs> Uh, I knew it was going to happen. I knew it was going to happen. Support my uh, comedy career, and uh, let's get this PS5 together, boys, on on YouTube. All right, relax, Nick. Relax. Jesus Christ. So what does she do on this thing? Um, basically porn. Really? I mean... She, Did they ever ask for a guy to do things with her, and you do it with her? Yeah, yeah, I'm the penis. Oh it's your God. penis? Yeah, I'm, I'm the penis. Whoa. I'm the penis. Dude, I'll subscribe to your OnlyFans, dude. dude. Only hams, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Does she ever do things on the OnlyFans that she won't let you just do on your own? Damn. Like in your private life? Okay. It's, that, it's that's more... Frankie Ka- Ka- Chaotic, huh? Yeah. yeah it's yeah. X. Ka- 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 yeah. Obity, 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 obity. Yeah. She's, she's yeah. nice. Nice, I'm, nice I'm, tattoos. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of myself. I'm Red Band is already following and subscribed. I know. Um, it's great. There we go. Oh, what good happened? <laughs> Let's see this. The tip. table's okay. moving up. <laughs> yeah. Red Band yeah. loves hot Franks. <laughs> 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 so, uh, wow! What's the wildest thing anybody's requested you to <laughs> do? A dude requested poop shit recently. Oh. Wait, what do you mean poop, poop shit? shit? Yeah, Does that mean no shit at all? That's a double. No, he asked for like a video of like her like pooping on the floor. Poop shit is what, how much, how much what we call Red Band stand-up <laughs> material. <laughs> poop, poop shit. <laughs> how much was this guy willing to pay to watch your girlfriend take a poop on the floor? He said, "Hmm, might be worth it to seven hundred dollars." Oh my God! Oh, yeah, yeah. He yeah. he went seven hundred. Did the she weird, do it? The weirder the request, I mean, the higher the price. Right. Basically. So she did it then. No, he didn't. He hasn't done it yet. But he's he, he I could tell he's like he he's messaging about it. It's funny. Like she tells me about the messages. There, it's, it's red band. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I know a lot about this. Like there's uh, a <laughs> there's a there's there's people like say like porn stars. Uh, they'll get hired, hired usually for like escorting or something like that. But there's some people that are into shit where they'll just be like, I'll rent you the hotel room. Just go in there, take a shit, don't flush it, and then I'll come in after you. Oh, and just, my God. And then they just like play oh, with it and sad. eat it. Oh, and my like God. Like that. I don't know if you've ever stayed at a Comfort Inn, but every room at the Comfort Inn has shit waiting in the toilet. Is it is it weird for you the first time that you saw the upload of you having sex with your girlfriend on her OnlyFans? Does that make sense? Like, is it weird so, for you to see? So it's like kind of not really. So it's like the – basically it's like – I don't know if Red Band just subscribed right now or not, but like <laughs> – he went. He went to the quick Google to see if there's any free yeah, images. Yeah, yeah, I went to the free one. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, it, there's not. Anyway, uh, but so no, I mean, like, it's like more or less like her stuff is like, you know, a bunch of like sexy outfits and stuff like that. And then if people want to see more, it's like right. Send then you pay ex- extra. Yeah, send extra on this one. It's like a. It's like a strip club, basically. It's, it's like I know a lot of people making a, a lot of money from it. You know, like, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, like, the, the, honestly, the reason she. How she many people me. do you know? Uh, about ten people, but wow. one of the girls I know plug, plug is making over a hundred thousand dollars a month on it. Whoa! Yeah. yeah oh I, my no, god! It, she sold me on it because that's a lot that she... of poops on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, Jamar Neighbors has an OnlyFans, <laughs> and it's just a picture of his bare foot. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, yeah, one one guy tipped me like seven dollar one time. Seventy? <laughs> seven dollars. Wow, seven dollars. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's it's more it's kind of like a strip club. Like there's like a door fee to get in and see stuff, and then it's like if you want like more, you gotta like tip for that, basically. Oh my goodness, you guys have kids? No, fuck no. Me. Are you no. going to? Not if I have anything to say about it. Wow. What that. if someone pays like a lot of money to see that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> it would, Great I would, question. I would need it all speed. like up front and like. All right, thirty grand. I want to raise your kid. How much would it cost? Let's talk actual numbers here. I know a guy in whatever, finances. Whatever, whatever the the whatever like the entire cost. Like I would never want to even think about that kid's. Hundred thousand bucks. You would do it in a heartbeat, right? You're rich, like hundred thousand dollars for a kid. Tony's not paying. Yeah, like, I'm not I, doing it. I'm. This is hypothetical. No, this isn't I, some type of indecent proposal. No, happening. no. <laughs> No, I'm saying one hundred thousand dollars for I'm, you to make a baby with your wife. <laughs> you show me all Here's, the videos. I get all the I would, links. I'll I'll buy the hotel room. You just have the baby. Leave it there. I'm gonna come in afterwards. <laughs> leave it in the toilet. Red Band will raise it. <laughs> what else, Nick? What else is I, going on in the world? Uh, we're well, like one of the the big selling points that she kind of sold me on it on was like aside from like a personal friend of hers making like a ridiculous amount of money through it and like what's her specialty? What's the friend's specialty? Uh, she recently changed her name, but it's she she has a affiliation with Nintendo and her brand. Oh shit! <laughs> Damn. And uh, and she knows her personally, and she's. Killing it financially on OnlyFans and stuff like that. And Nintendo then, Fist. What is she, and, Yoshi? Uh, she's like po- Pokemon stuff. Oh. Uh, wow. and, but she she got like sued and stuff, so she's like changing. Oh, her she got name. sued? Yeah, oh. Nintendo hit her with oh, the big I, I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. you know. So wait, are you <laughs> Nintendo's not... like, you better switch what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Switch it up. Are you, so if she was... It was, she got sued because of the name, not because she was dressing up. Yeah, as that? yeah, yeah. Because of her, just because of her name. Gotcha. And then, like, yeah, like that all happened. But she was making like ridiculous. Like, she just bought like a fucking charger with like a custom paint job and like a custom bunch of accessories. Was it then, an ice cream paint job? Yeah, uh, 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 ice yeah. cream paint job. And, but my lady sold me on that, like about, both on the money aspect of it and saying that she would support my comedy career and that like three ways with other chicks for, for hey, content. Hey, I got a tip for you. I we used to be in the same situation, but you know like when they want to buy the underwear, you just go to like Kmart and buy like that bag of 10 pairs of girls underwear oh, yeah, and stuff. Yeah. And they want her to like rub it on their junk and make it like used underwear. Just rub it on your balls and yeah. stuff like that and send them out. They love it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's That's how I do it. But yeah, yeah, no, I mean, we're we're a, a we're a poly couple, so it's a like, poly couple. What's that mean, dude? That means they're fans of Poly Shore, bro. Yeah, <laughs> they like Biodome, bro, and son-in-law. <laughs> yeah, what does What's that mean? Up? What does the poly shit mean? So, uh, like. In in simple, we we're looking we we're, we're always looking for like other females to like fuck around with. She's bi. Dude, same here. I'm always like looking for new females, bunch. bro. Yeah. Uh, how's that working out nice for you guys? Ones. Yeah, uh, it's it's been pretty cool. You're couple. able to get other females over there. Yeah, yeah. Are any of them uh, hotter than your wife? Not really. No, no. Right. Like she's definitely like. The attraction. I, I like tattoos and piercing. I, I just like all the extra. Why are you into extra. that? Why are you into that? Your mom was very Christian, very pure. Yeah, yeah. Right. But yeah, just that's how opposite, it works. It's all opposite, psychology. Yeah. So now you want something different because you yeah. don't respect your mother. Mormons. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, don't yeah. respect your mother. Say it into the microphone. I do not respect my mother. Okay, we're gonna send her that for Mother's Day. <laughs> we're gonna send her that. We're gonna send her that gift with oh, your we, dick. We, we got we, yeah. we got history. She yeah, we're gonna we're gonna cut it in between some OnlyFans <laughs> things. We're gonna, it's gonna private. Start with that. It's gonna go. I back actually to that. recently told my mom that I did that. Oh, like, well, yeah. how would she react? She's way she cooler than not. She squirted everywhere. Fan. Yeah, yeah. She, I mean, she was. She's not subscribed or anything. But I mean, yeah. Mm-hmm. That would be weird I, if I she's a supportive mom and she's like, I follow anything my son does. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think is willing to pay seven hundred dollars for just a poop? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. All right, Nick. Well, you did it again, buddy. Fun times. Job, Have a great day, Nick Reese. Everybody, there he goes. On to the next one, Ricky. What is it? Frankie Chaotic on OnlyFans. See, that's a plug. Yes. F-R-A-N-K-I-I. Did she buy you those Nikes? No, I bought myself that stimulus money. Oh, that's right. Wow. Yeah. Look at check that. Out. Look at that. My goodness. Not only does he fuck like a black guy, he spends his money like one, too. Absolutely incredible. Straight to the Nikes with his government-issued stimulus check. Good job, Nick. Where do you live again? Hemet. Hemet, baby. For frightening, frightening place. The shut up. That's it. That's it. Thank you, Nick. No one asks any other fucking question. Everybody wants to. Everybody wants to add their fucking ten cents today. 
Yes, Williams. Williams. <laughs> Williams' timing was perfect. It's the best. Yeah. To per Perdido Key. Perdido yeah, Key. what are you gonna do there? Okay. Wow. That was just, that was literally just ten cents. I think you need twenty five cents to uh, get the rest of the story. Bye, William. Bye, William. Ladies and gentlemen, I pulled another name out of the bucket. Uh, I was so excited about it that I pulled it out while Nick was still at the microphone. But I did it. I saw this guy on a street corner the other day, and I said, holy shit, that's Dan Nolan. I rolled down the window. I go, Dan Nolan. He turned around. It was Dan Nolan. He said, Tony. I go, what's up? He goes, not much. I go, want to do the show on Monday? He said, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, one of our favorite joke writers and comedians ever on this show, the great Dan Nolan. Here he is. Dan Thank Nolan. you. Uh, I used to be a professional studio audience member. That's like a real job that you can have in Los Angeles. Uh, basically, all you do is you uh, stand outside of CBS Studios for four hours, and then a guy with a ponytail pays you $60 to watch the Steve Harvey show. Uh, or just like a Steve Harvey show. There's like 15 different Steve Harvey shows. Steve Harvey literally has so many TV shows they have to pay people to watch them. And it's not a bad job if you're just like a struggling actor, or comedian, or a crazy homeless person. My favorite one to watch was Little Big Shots. Uh, if you've never seen the show before, basically the idea is uh, they have these little kids that are as smart as little kids can be. Uh, and then there's Steve Harvey who is as dumb as an adult can be. <laughs> and the entire show is just about their struggle for dominance. <laughs> He just bullies the kids the whole time. Like, he'll just ask them, like, hey, little big shot, what's your talent? And the little kid will just be like, I know about computers. And he'll just be like, yeah, but you ain't never get no pussy. <laughs> All right, thanks. <laughs> Dan Nolan is back, everyone. Welcome, Dan. Hey, good to be here. It's so weird. I saw you on the fucking down by the grove. I love it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. No doubt about it. Just pulled up, rolled down my window. Booked you. Yeah, I was meeting a hinge date, so I was just walking. I was wandering back really? and forth on that corner. What's yeah. hinge? It's like uh, it's uh, Tinder, but they like ask you stupid little prompts and stuff. And st it's like it's like a better version of Tinder. I thought it was like you have to be friends with somebody that's friends with that person. No, that's like Raya. I actually just oh. interviewed for a job there. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. That's like the fan. It's like Tinder for like influencers. Yeah, and like semi-famous people. Yeah, and right. Like yeah. yeah, Jamar just got an account. <laughs> oh, I bet <laughs> <Yeah>. he's stoked. <laughs> just a picture of his foot. Yeah. <laughs> huh. So, uh, so what made you join Hinge? Uh, it's just less grimy than Tinder. Tinder is like retarded. It's just full of bots and like spam and shit. But Hinge, you have to like put work into a profile. Uh, and they just ask you stupid questions. And How'd that like, date go for you that night? It was good. Yeah, it was well, that good. was like our second or third date. Wow. Yeah. All right. Have you heard about uh, the ex heroin dating app called <laughs> Syringe? Syringe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'd be great on it. <laughs> Dan Nolan is a recovered heroin addict. He is, yeah. Part of his incredible story. How's the pandemic been treating you? Good. I uh, I'm resetting the sobriety clock. I did. I got addicted to kratom. Oh, wow! wow. <laughs> yeah. You can't get addicted to kratom. Yeah, that's, that's, no, you can get that's really not addicted. Possible. To that. That's one of the. <laughs> Are they sponsored? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's impossible. Yeah, it's no, it's really good for you. Never mind. <laughs> we'll cut that out. <laughs> one of the one of the t studies said it's not addictive. <laughs> <laughs> what is yeah. that? Do you have some on you? <laughs> My goodness. Like, what, so, did, what did it make you do? Or yeah, right? let's talk about it. What, Kratom? Mm -hmm. uh, I just, like, I started, I hired a personal trainer, and he, he was beating the shit out of me, and then I, I it's just a painkiller. It's, it's just heroin. It's just gay heroin. Yeah. <laughs> gay heroin. Yeah. I'm into that. <laughs> I started listening to a lot of corn. I went down a dark road. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. were taking some weird, uh, like, workout. Yeah, like, I'm doing, uh, like, testosterone and some other shit. Okay. Yeah, some Moralin and... Uh, Wait, what? What? Why? What? <laughs> I'm doing I'm doing hormone replacement therapy. Why? Just to be more of a man. I'm trans transitioning to oh, a man. <laughs> you're transitioning to more of a man. <laughs> yeah, right. Who, wow. Who's advising you in this? Uh, I have a doctor. 
Some and he's <laughs> said that he's doing this. Why? Uh, you need to be more I have low, of a I have low testosterone. My patient. What? I have low testosterone, so I started taking injections. I'm like five months into it now. Jesus. You're a drug addict, Dan. <laughs> you got one hit of that testosterone. <laughs> Can I say, like, that low testosterone thing, that's such a, a weird thing because, I, you know, I, I've always had thought I had very, very, very low t- uh, and when I got my numbers done, they're like, most people don't have low testosterone. They have slightly lower than normal, right. but it, you're fine. So did you have like slightly lower or were you like, no, this is, this is like I'm almost a woman. <laughs> no, I was like, yeah, I was at 400, which is the bottom of like the average, average range. So yeah, it goes so like 400 to average. 1200. Yeah. They were like, yeah, you're like, ovulating. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. I don't know how to tell you this, but you just started your period. <laughs> how long have you been taking testosterone for? Like five months. Five Has months. It affected what? your body? Sorry, Tony. Uh, oh. Yeah, it started. <laughs> Testicles are smaller. Yeah, the, the, my balls. Yeah, I'm, I'm infertile. <laughs> and, and sometimes you get very angry? Uh, no, no, that's more like a roid rage thing. No, this I, I just have a lot more Which energy. Is testosterone. That's what steroids are. Hmm? Right? No. No? No. All right. <laughs> is it HGH that you're on? Uh, no, I'm on uh, uh, Samoralin, which is uh, human growth hormone releasing hormone, HGRH. Okay. Yeah. So it just makes my brain... It's dangerous to take... Um, <laughs> I think you need to it's take... It's dangerous uh, to take what? HGH, because then your body... If you take it if, like from an outside source, your body eventually stops producing I it. I think you need to talk to HGH, RH, HR and really get on top <laughs> of this because this is really difficult. So the how results. much longer do you have to take these uh, treatments for? The rest of my life. What? The rest of your life. And it's expensive. Yeah. Oh, no, it's another, not. I another found a place that's cheaper now. So I was spending a lot of money If you on stop it. taking it, what did they say will happen to you? Uh, I'll I'm start. Dan Nolan again. <laughs> <laughs> <Hi>. <laughs> have you been lifting weights? Yeah. Yeah. Hello, Can everybody. <laughs> flex for us. Let's see these muscles. What happened to uh? You do look way bigger, this? dude. Like yeah. way bigger. Yeah, I'm just, I'm like bulkier. I have to, I'm still, I have to cut down is going to be like that. You can't do it right. all at the same time. You have to bulk and then cut. Yeah. Yeah. Um, since you've been taking this, have your porn s- searches changed at all? <laughs> no. Good question. <laughs> yeah. Good question. Are you into uh, butchier women now? No. <laughs> I mean, I always wanted to fuck like a fitness model, like a, yeah. like a jacked chick. I don't know. <laughs> they don't have any of those on Hinge? I'm no. into beef jerky porn now. Uh <laughs> You know, uh, seesaw porn. I like a hard pussy. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I like seeing girls squirt in a sawmill. <laughs> what else, Dan, other than uh, testosterone treatments, what else have you been doing the last uh, few weeks? Bought a Mustang a couple wow. weeks ago. Yeah. That's your I, first that, car, right? Yeah. I thought you were, yeah. were going to say <laughs> bought a mustache. Oh, I bought a mustache <laughs> yeah. with HGH. I'm on mustache replacement <laughs> yeah. therapy. Yeah. I'll, I'll do anything to be a man. <laughs> so you never had a car your whole entire life? No, I had a car like years and years ago. I can't believe you crashed. got a Mustang. All this treatment to become a man, you get such a bitch car. It's <laughs> <laughs> incredible. I, I, uh, I watch a lot of Tim Allen on repeat now <laughs> in my house. <laughs> What kind of Mustang did you get? It's a 2007. I was going to buy like an old one and like finance it and shit. But then I was like, there's no power steering. So I just bought a used one cash. Yeah, uh, I'm a testosterone. I need power steering. (laughs) (laughs) Well, if it doesn't have power steering, that makes you more of a man. Because you have to grab every single. Maybe in a couple of years, Jeremy. (laughs) (laughs) Wow, Dan. So you're sticking with the girl from Hinge? Is that your move? Uh, we're hanging out. It's been fun. It's That's been like great. a week or whatever. What do you like about her? Uh, I don't know. She's cute. She's got a nice little body and stuff. Ooh. We got. I got a note on my door today for fucking too loud. No way. <laughs> yeah. What did the Whoa. note say? Uh, they phrased it very politely. They didn't say you're fucking too loud. See, I got a note on my front door. You know what I keep? I keep it on the front door. I let everybody <laughs> see that fucking thing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, just, I had the same kind of note once, and they said, like, oh, you know, we have kids. And yeah. Did they just kind of, like, braze over it? <laughs> yeah, they said, like, Excuse me, sir, we heard you going to the bathroom <laughs> last night. <laughs> <laughs> I got a note on my back door. <laughs> All right, Dan. Wow. <laughs> the, the note is just addressed, Dear Mr. Hulk Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We heard a lot of brothers last night. Yeah, oh, brother. <laughs> wow. Is, that's just incredible. What's is how has sex changed since the testosterone treatment? Uh, it's good. That's why I started taking it because I was never horny anymore. I could get like boners all the time, but I didn't care. <laughs> wow. 
That's weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, just be like, wait yeah. you would get boners all the time? Yeah, I had no problem getting boners. Dude, I feel like you just quoted a Radiohead lyric. <laughs> <laughs> it blew my mind. I got boners all the time, but didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> wow. My God. So what would you do with the boner? What Nothing. do you mean you wouldn't care? I just wouldn't care. Like, I don't know. I, 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 I was in a relationship with my girlfriend for like two years, and my I just stopped caring about sex. And uh, Yeah, about two years. I mean, yeah. Let's face it. It's pretty boring. Yeah, I don't know if it was. I don't think. I don't. I don't know. I. <laughs> I don't know if it was that. I. I really think it was just like low testosterone, and plus I was taking the kratom, <laughs> which right. fucks your your dick up and stuff. It does. <laughs> Wait. It just it makes you. Oh no, horny. it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, no, it's actually no, it does. It's not kratom dot com, <laughs> or whatever our sponsor is. <laughs> don't say kratom. <laughs> Bill Billings said. You ever kratom. tried kratom? Cum? That's, that's a good one. Craig okay, Cump. okay. Dan, uh, so much fun. Thank right, you so great. much. Have a great Thanks, day. Guys. Dan Nolan. Dan Nolan, everybody. Dan Nolan comedy on everything, right? <laughs> Social media, follow him. Tell him how much you love him. He's a legend. An absolute monster. In fact, speaking of monsters, there's only one guy I know that could possibly even begin to follow that act, and he's coming up next. How absolutely perfect is that? This guy uh, became a regular and uh, absolutely took the show over by storm, an unbelievable force, truly one of my favorite comedians on the planet, originally from beautiful New York, then became a god of improv comedy at Second City in Chicago, and now graces us with his presence and a new minute every single week. It's the legend killer himself, Michael Lair, everyone. Wow. In the flush, coming in dizzy tonight. Here he is, yeah. Michael Lehrer. Yeah. Women have been responsible for every wonderful thing that has ever happened to me. And men have I been an asshole. I must have someone died in my dick. I've lied and cheated to every woman I've ever dated. But, but, all those women ended up marrying better men after me. So everything happens for a reason. Even my lying and cheating. Now, um, women of the world have been rejoicing that my legs gave out. Since I've been crippled, I've retained my handsomeness and smart mouth but I'm stuck in one spot. So I've been hit in the mouth by many women many times. But I'm here to let you know, come on, Chica, I ain't the one. Thank you. There you go, Michael Lair. Putting a little bat signal out there for all the ladies out there. Look at that. Using Kiltoni as his own personal hinge. One could say hey. this is hinge cliffs notes. Hinge cliff. Yeah, man. <laughs> yo, just <laughs> trying to keep a raw dog and dirty, yo. Is that your style, dude? Honest. I'll tell you this. You have a better right arm than one of the comedians that was up here earlier. Really? Yeah. Why? Was this Steve Lee? No, no, it was a it was a different. No. Uh, he's behind you. He's waving at you right now. There he's it. got yeah. one of those ET alien arms. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, yeah oh, it's sort man. of like that. Remember those old antennas that used to be on the house that were all yeah like, rabbit ears. Yep, he has rabbit ears for an arm. Oh man, I bet he can get a handicap parking pass for that. He can only get a left handicap. <laughs> yeah. But the left spot is usually not occupied. That's right, Michael. Yeah. Welcome back to the show, the great Michael Lair. Thank you. Um, a few things. Go right ahead. 
Nick talked about um, his life and his girlfriend, and coincidentally, right before the film, his girlfriend, her legs are covered in tattoos like a tattoo museum. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Nick, I don't want to be inappropriate. You know, we're friends. And you can say no. And I'm talking to his girlfriend, too. But I'm like, can I use your legs as costumes for a photo or video shoot? And um, I think it's going to happen. Wow. Look at that. You booked her. I'm going to wear her legs like a shirt. Is one of them. <laughs> well, seven hundred and fifty bucks, and I'm pretty sure you can get her to shit on your kitchen floor. Yeah. Yeah, but <laughs> I'm not in that. I'm on that. She's got a logical bebop. She's got a dude. Whoa. Whoa. Uh oh. Uh-oh. Oh. He's overheating. The system's he, overheating. He's into everybody. a different kind of scat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Short circuit, Johnny number five. Whoa. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, come on, man. Let's free flow. What else was going on? You oh, said the a few last things. guy. Yeah, him calling um uh kratom gay heroin is maybe one of the best jokes of the year. Yeah, okay, okay. That was brilliant. I love it. And I've been on kratom. I've been addicted to every drug. Mm-hmm. But cranium is not addiction. Yes, it works off the opiate perceptors, but it's safe. And getting over it is like getting over quitting coffee. But it's real fun, and you can definitely fuck on cranium. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what I think. I mean, I know a lot of people that use Kratom, and it's it's great. It's a natural remedy for... Quitting coffee sounds like hell, by the way. I I I can't imagine that. I thought when you were selling Kratom, like when you were looking at the camera, you were like, yes, it's non-habit forming. Yes, it has a lot of health supplements. Yes, it gave me ALS. Yes. (laughs) Who cares? Yeah. No, I think traumatic had an injury. Give me a list. Traumatic Ooh. head injury? Yeah, I think so. I've been scanned every way up and down. But after I die, I wanted them to cut open my brain. And I bet I have NFL disease. What do you think happened? How did you get these brain injuries? I've been banging my head around real hard since I was like four years old. Because I'm an extremist. Right. Uh, adrenaline drunkie. Yep. A stimuli maniac. Right. You feel me? Yeah. Hell and, yeah. And um, so when I go for it, I go hard. That's right. Even when I was a toddler, there was no half-stepping. Right. And that means you bang your head into the drywall real hard a lot. Yep. But also, I've been beaten several times. You've been beaten up. You've been beaten unconscious. Several times. Two concussion or just beaten up, blacked out. So there are things with the brain that are a mystery. Like my disease is 150 years old. And the only medicine they have is sitting. And I'm fine with that. But look, I bet when it comes down to it, they're going to find that I just rocked out my my cock out too hard. And it's all good. What do you think about tonight's episode, Michael Lair? Well, I don't know about anything that <laughs> happened in the past. <laughs> I live in the moment, and I deal with the future in pragmatic ways. So, 
this crippled motherfucker who will never work again, who loves comedy, who does not have any fucks to give, he's coming to Austin, motherfucker! (laughs) Wow! What an incredible reveal. Michael Lair announcing his move to Austin. (laughs) This guy is mobile and ready to go. It's about a 28-day wheelchair ride to Austin, Texas, and he's about to take it. I need people's houses about to recharge my chair. That's right. He's going to need to stop in Alhambra. Uh, Burbank, uh, yeah. Van Nuys. <laughs> a lot uh, of places. So he's going to have a little snail trail out there, leaving his mark on the beautiful road. Hopefully there's some sidewalks on the way to Austin. Fucking put me in the trunk and give me the microphone and tell me where you want the motherfucking funny. Wow, there you go. He's going to be performing exclusively inside the trunk of a car. MichaelLairComedy.com for everything Michael Lair. Thank you so much, Michael Lair. You're the best, buddy. There he goes. Let's look at the, tonight's drawing from Ryan J. E. Belt. Every single print available, RyanJEBelt.com. Wow, look at that one. Bill Billingsley with an extra large bottle of liquor. I feel like that was definitely drawn in the moment. Look at me, Jeremiah, the jet ski. Red Band, what a drawing. RyanJBelt.com, he's doing a bunch of auctions, other things, fun times. Guys, this is it, December 8th, the debut special of Jeremiah Watkins' family reunion. (laughs) Jeremiah Watkins, molded and folded here on Kill Tony, your very own band leader. You Kill Tony fans have to support Jeremiah. Go to Amazon.com or JeremiahWalkins.com, anywhere you want to go. Watch Family Reunion. Jeremiah, what else? Um, if you like the sax hat, you can get that at JeremiahWalkins.com too. Uh, sax hat. Sax hat. Uh, I want to uh, thank uh, uh, Tony and Brian uh, for always being uh, supportive of me on uh, this show and in supporting stand-up endeavors and taking me on the road to a lot of places uh, where I formed, you know, Oh, this material over the years and stuff like that and uh, just like there's a lot of fun crowd work moments and stuff like that and I developed those chops like being around these guys so I'm very grateful to uh, Tony and Brian so thank you guys Jeremiah Watkins giving credit where it rightfully deserves thank you buddy you're a good friend thank you how about a big hand for the jet ski Jesse Johnson everyone getting us through it Absolutely powerful. She has handmade ornaments available at jetskijohnson.com. What else, Jesse? Uh, thank you so much. Check out Jeremiah's special. It's awesome playing the band with him. And, yeah, he took us on the road for the weekend. He's amazing. Check him out. He's hilarious. You'll get your money's worth. There you go. Get it. December 8th, family reunion. Who else? Oh, the jo- great Joel Berg, Joel yeah. the Menace was with us all <laughs> <Me. night. laughs> You guys, I mean, honestly, from the bottom of my heart, I love all of you. I mean, it's like, this is awesome. This is family. I love Jeremiah. I'm so happy that he's got a special coming out soon. Uh, You know, we get crazy here. The Comedy Store is a hub for psychopaths and all the miscreants, and it's the island of misfit toys, and I just so happen to be one of them. So, you know, I get crazy. Here we are. Here we go. Here's Tony laughing at me. It's all good. It's all right. This is the first time he laughed at me. I love you guys. Any sort of uh, any sort of craziness that I get into is not against my friends. I'm just trying to have a good time. I love you guys. Uh, Thank you for letting me have. Okay, all right. Red band. Hey guys, check out DeathSquad.tv. Don't forget to check out Dead Air with Brian Holtzman, who might be moving to Texas. We'll see what there happens there. And Brothers in Cursive. Check that out. DeathSquad.tv. Go to Kratom.com, baby. Brian. Absolutely. Support our sponsors that you heard earlier on in the episode. And don't forget, Jeremiah Watkins, family reunion. Jeremiah? Just one more thing. I, uh, starting out here at the Comedy Store, Tony Hinchcliffe and Benji Aflalo were the first to put me on potluck all the time. And Brian Redband was the first person to book me on his desk squad shows out of the Ice House. So they helped me like get in here at the store. So thank you once again, guys. There you go. Thank you so much. Congratulations, buddy. Congratulations, Jeremiah. We're very proud of you. 
Good night, everybody. We'll see you next week. Oh, you see me there.